Good morning, and welcome to your online digital worship for Sunday, March 6th, 2022. It is the first Sunday of Lent. We're so pleased to have you joining us online, wherever you may be, for this worship experience at Trinity. This morning's announcements are a reminder that for those who are in town, we are going to have a fellowship event, a further deep dive into the poetry of Wendell Berry every Wednesday, and a meal. So every Wednesday in Lent, at 5.30, in our Faithful Blend Cafe, we're going to have a soup and salad, light Lenten supper, followed by a conversation led by a different speaker every week about the poem that you will hear on the previous Sunday. This Sunday it is entitled, I Go Among the Trees and Sit Still, and they're all by Wendell Berry. So please join us for those events every Wednesday in Lent. I also wanted to remind everyone that the one great hour of sharing offering that we do every year is coming up in a couple of weeks on March 27th. And if you're coming by the church, make sure to get your hand-dipped chocolate pretzels. It's a fundraiser for the St. Baldrick's event. The St. Baldrick's event this year will be virtual online, but we are raising money for it, so please come on out to the church and get those pretzels. The youth group, led by Abraham McCune, hand dipped those on their overnighter they had last weekend. So come on out and support a great cause and get some delicious treats at the church this weekend. The season of Lent is 40 days long, which is good because we have a lot of praying and mending to do. Broken relationships, broken systems, broken promises. It's enough to break your heart right in half. But God calls us to take courage, to bind up broken hearts, including our own. The season of Lent is 40 days long, which is good. We have 40 days to confess and mend and create a new future together. 40 days to fast from the busyness and keep Sabbath. 40 days to build up our strength and help put the world back together again, one stitch at a time so that together we might rise again with Jesus for the 50 days of Easter, stronger than before, stitched back together and ready to welcome that new and dawning day. Temptation surrounds us at every turn, inviting us to take just a little more, more food, more money, more power, more life. What could it hurt? We hear on television, from friends, in our own souls. More suffering, more hunger, more need, more fear, more anger. Do we gather today in worship to hear the consequences of more and to celebrate that we do not need more when we have everything in Christ? Beloved of God, let us drink deeply from the wellspring of God's Spirit, which has all we need to live fully, love deeply, and serve faithfully. Let us worship God together. Please join me in the spirit of prayer as we hear this prayer of confession. Forgive us when we try to control you, insisting that your will must match ours. For we confess that we do not like the unknown, so we fill that void with should and musts, we expect both you and others to obey. We'd rather keep the door closed with certainty than risk opening to changing life. We'd rather be bound up in our own beliefs than risk being set free by love for love. Friends, now that we have confessed in our hearts the ways we have fallen short of our God this week. Hear now this good news. God has already forgiven our debts and repaid our sin. God's Spirit fills us with love and peace and leads us to heal others instead of hurting them. Therefore, let us forgive one another as God has forgiven us. Thanks be to God. Amen. This morning's scripture 
comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. It's the well-known story of Jesus being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And as we begin our Lenten series on the Sabbath poetry of Wendell Berry, every Sunday we will pair the scripture with a poem. This morning's poem is entitled, I go among the trees and sit still. I go among the trees and sit still. All my stirring becomes quiet around me like circles on water. My tasks lie in their places where I have left them, asleep like cattle. Then what is afraid of me comes and lives a while in my sight. What it fears in me leaves me, and the fear of me leaves it. It sings, and I hear its song. Then what I am afraid of, comes. I live for a while in its sight. What I fear in it leaves it, and the fear of it leaves me. It sings, and I hear its song. After days of labor, mute in my consternations, I hear my song at last, and I sing it. As we sing, the day turns, the trees move. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is the first Sunday in Lent, that season of contemplation and fasting before we celebrate the glorious resurrection of Christ at Easter. This is a time, as Christians, when we turn our focus inwards toward our relationship with God preparing and cleansing our hearts and minds to better fully grasp the mystery and miracle of Easter Sunday. Therefore, temptation is the perfect topic for this season, and today's scripture, the famous temptation of Christ, gets right at this. But it also is connected to another story of temptation, that one of Adam and Eve in the garden. This morning, we have the first temptation from Christ in Matthew, and the second is Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden from the second and third chapters of Genesis. This is what we are told in that story, also so well known. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die. 
For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. This well-known passage in Scripture tells the story of the fall of Adam and Eve. We are all familiar with the serpent, the apple, and with Adam and Eve being kicked out of the garden. We all know the lesson on original sin. However, I would like us to think differently about this scripture, about another lesson that we can learn from the story, a lesson not about original sin, but about original insecurity, our desire from birth to feel the presence of God in our daily lives. And this takes place in the garden, in the wilderness, among the trees. Wendell Berry hearkens us to the garden, reminding us that the original paradise that God created for us was the wilderness, the woods, the garden, the beauty of creation. The passage from Genesis on Adam and Eve shows us much about the human condition. Here they are living lives of peace and plenty in the garden created by God and given to them to care for, to till, to tend, to enjoy. Yet even in this paradise, they feel incomplete, insufficient, and ultimately insecure. It is this insecurity, this original insecurity, that the serpent plays upon, calling into question the fundamental trustworthiness of God, their creator. God has not told you everything, the serpent suggests. Completeness, wholeness, self-sufficiency, mastery, these are within your grasp. And by naming their incompleteness, their insecurities, the serpent draws their attention to their want, their lack, their need to avoid in their lives. Years ago, I heard a description of this void, this original insecurity that has resonated with me as a God-shaped hole. The 17th century French philosopher Blaise Pascal first used this term to describe the yearning we feel as human beings for God. He did not see this as a lack, however, but rather as the means by which God keeps us tethered to our life-giving relationship with God. And I completely agree. It is a blessing that there is a part of us that can only be fulfilled, only be fulfilled by a relationship with God. With this in mind, the Genesis story indicates that before there is original sin, there is original insecurity. Adam and Eve, then, are tempted to overcome that original insecurity, not through their relationship with God, but through the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Fruit that at that moment looks to be shaped just like that God-shaped hole in their lives. Now, Wendell Berry gives us a path through temptation and towards God. That path is the quiet and stillness of Sabbath. That path leads to the woods and to the beauty of nature. That path can help us fill that God-shaped hole in our life by finding and communicating with God among the trees. That's the theme we're going to explore this entire six weeks of Lent. As the weather warms this Lent, may we all find places and time to be in nature and find the God-shaped hole exists right outside our doors. It can be fulfilled by God's creation in nature, by time in nature, by prayer and fasting and communication with God, by stillness and Sabbath. We are told over and over again in Scripture that Jesus found peace and solitude in the wilderness that Jesus spoke to God in the wilderness and prayed to God in the wilderness, and now we are invited to do the same. In this time of climate crisis, it is more important than ever to connect to nature, to find strength and stability and our connection with God outdoors, and to resist temptation, to resist the lure of our phones and devices, the siren call of those little tiny screens, and replace them instead with the Bird song of the woods. That's our challenge this Lent in 2022. Now, in the Matthew scripture, at the heart of this temptation of Jesus rests the same insinuation that the serpent made to Adam and Eve, that God is not trustworthy. He says, if, if 
If you are the son of God, Satan says, this word if, this tiny word, calls Jesus' relationship to God into question and suggests that he could and should establish himself on his own terms. Jesus resists the temptation to define himself apart from God and instead is content to know who he is in relationship to whose he is. And we are invited to do the same, to define ourselves as God's beloved children and not to define ourselves by how much money we have, how much stuff we have accumulated, how much wealth and power we have. Now, there's nothing wrong with owning things or having wealth or success in this world. In fact, some of these wonderful achievements are things that I believe we should be proud of. However, it is when we use those things as a substitute for our relationship with God that things get out of balance. The question we need to ask ourselves this morning is, what things present themselves to us as perfectly shaped to fill our own God-shaped holes? What things, that is, are we tempted to look to in the hope of eliminating that original insecurity that we all feel? For some of us, we try to fill this God-shaped hole with stuff, buying more things, or with having just the right brand of sneakers or the latest digital device. If we remember instead, however, that in baptism, God gives to us our essential identity as beloved children first, no matter what we have, how much stuff we've accumulated, we might be less likely to define ourselves in terms of what we are lacking, for we lack nothing in our relationship with God. For no new iPhone or pair of sneakers can fill the God-shaped hole in our lives. The temptations that Satan offers to Christ are monumental ultimate power and rule, performing death-defying acts and food after 40 days of fasting. Our temptations and our lives might be a little less severe, but no less important in our journey as Christians. For most of us, for example, temptations arise in our lives when we look at others and feel insecure about not having enough or being enough. It comes in the judgments that we make about strangers or others that make choices different than we would make. Temptation rules us when we turn away from those in need right next to us and those who suffer in the world. When we ignore the things that we can do for all of those around us, it's tempting to justify all the little dishonest things that we do. The little white lies, the questionable business decisions, speaking about our spouses behind their backs, or laughing at racist, sexist, or homophobic jokes. Sometimes it's tempting to act out of anger or violence, to let frustrations over little things get the better of us. It's tempting to listen to our society that tells us to fulfill our lives by buying more things, to covet money and power, to fear those who are different from us, and to solve our problems with violence. But Jesus counteracting the messages from society, tells us something else. He tells us not to turn to violence, but to turn the other cheek. He tells us to love our enemies, to care for the sick, the poor, and the needy, and to seek riches in the kingdom of heaven, not here on earth. Jesus tells us to turn toward God in love instead of turning against each other in fear. Jesus tells us to fill our God-shaped holes are voids through relationship with God instead of filling them with material things. That's what Jesus says. And the good news is, the good news is that God wants all of us to be in this relationship together. Christ tells us how to cultivate this relationship through the scriptures, through worship, through prayer, and through service to others. We can find everything that we think we are lacking. This relationship to God is the only way to fill that God-shaped hole in our lives, our original insecurity. And again, we are looking at Wendell Berry's prescription for finding this connection to God in nature, in Sabbath, in stillness. We have been talking about temptations that take us away from God and towards sin. Yet, there is another type of temptation in our lives, and this is a very positive one. There is a temptation to turn towards God and towards loving relationships with one another. There is a temptation to follow Christ. 
it's tempting to pick up the phone and apologize to the person that you are fighting with. It's tempting to reach out to our neighbors and support one another in love. It's tempting to volunteer with the Habitat for Humanity Project, the food pantry, Majut School. It's tempting to get involved with all the great mission work that we have here at Trinity. And it's tempting, Trinity, United Church of Christ, as we come through two years of the pandemic, the major renovation of the 2020 building project, it's tempting to believe that the best days are still ahead of us, not behind us. As we continue to celebrate 150 years in this church, we look to all the wonderful things that have brought us to this point. But I dare say it is tempting to remember and to believe that the best days are still ahead, that we have no idea what incredible things God has in store for us in the future. May we all follow that temptation this Lenten season. Amen. Called to follow Jesus, we now gather at the table that he has prepared for us. We come to this table because we yearn to hear the quiet, still voice of God. We come to this table to remember that Christ is in the ordinary in life. We come to this table to open our eyes and to heighten our senses to the sacred nature all around us. And so, whether you believe a little or a lot, whether you are baptized or not, you are invited to this table because it belongs to Christ and not to us. Come to the sacred table not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are perfect and fulfilled, but come because in your imperfections you stand in need of God's grace. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek a presence. Come to this table, sisters and brothers, just as you are. This is the Lord's table, and it is an open table. It is spread for you and me that we might know again that God has come to us, shared our common lot, and invited us to join the people of a new age. You are invited to know the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, pour out your grace and your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup that we too would be filled with your wisdom, grace, and love, your transforming light, and your eternal life. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in your image in the world. When we gather at this table, may it be a taste of the banquet of heaven to come when Jesus returns in celebration and glory. Blessed are you, beloved God, beloved Christ, beloved Spirit, together the one source of all that is and that shall ever be. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Every time we gather at this table, we remember it was on the night in which Christ Jesus was betrayed. He gathered with his disciples for a Passover meal in an upper room. At that meal, he would forgive the one who would betray him and the one who would deny him. And then he took a loaf of bread. He blessed it, and he broke it for all things that are broken in this world. And then Jesus gave that bread new meaning when he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And likewise, after the supper, he gave thanks for the fruit that grows on the vine. He took a cup. He poured it out for them. And then he offered that cup to them, saying, This is the new covenant shed in my blood. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death upon the cross, his glorious resurrection, and proclaim that we shall wait for him until he comes again. Each time we break bread together, we participate in the body of the risen Christ. And each time we share this cup, we participate in the new, beloved community. Amen. It's the beginning of Lent. 
we hope that while you are thinking and contemplating about how to show your humble journey with Christ, that you may consider generously donating to Trinity UCC. We appreciate all of you who have contributed during the past couple years, kept us here during the pandemic, and now we are coming out on the other side, and we ask for you to continue to support us so we can continue to be the place where love thrives and grows, where we show grace to our neighbors, where we are the hands and feet for those in need in our community. But to do all of this, it takes your financial support. So please give generously of your tithes and your offerings. You can click on the link. You can mail them in. You can drop them in in person at the church. And we thank you for your support. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May you begin this Lenten journey remembering that you can find that God-shaped hole in your life filled by stepping out into the woods, under the trees, connecting with the songs of nature and disconnecting from the crazy rat race that we all live in. May you find this journey fulfilling as we go towards the glorious Sunday of Easter. Amen.